All right, good evening, students. I welcome you all to the live streaming of the daily news analysis. And I'm your educator, Prithvi Raj Singh. So uh, let us begin with the important news articles of 23rd July 2022 from Clat Prep headquarters. So, students, as I say, that uh, we do the daily news analysis sessions, and it's uh, uh, something which is we are doing from the past few months. And uh, with an overwhelming response, we started uh, the news live. Now, uh, so uh, this is I'm your educator, Prithviraj, and uh, I cover all the uh, important news articles of the prominent newspapers of the country, uh, not limited to the Hindu, but it, I also cover the, the important articles from Indian Express too. So let us begin, begin with today's session of 23rd July. On the very front page of the Hindu, there was an article about Dinesh Gunavardhane, sworn in as Sri Lankan Prime Minister. So you know that the crisis-ridden Sri Lanka, which is being, you know, undergoing huge economic crisis of balance of payment, trade deficit, fiscal deficit, the country who has seen his the Rajapaksa family, you know, who has completely maladministered the nation and has you know uh, and resultantly the nation has gone into the economic crisis and uh, because of the heavy protests uh, they had to resign and they fled the country you know so raj pakshi family fled the country now recently two days back we learned that uh, 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 you know vikram singhe ranil vikram singhe has been elected as the president of the new president of sri lanka and uh, he has been elected through parliamentary vote Right. So it is something which is very important to note that he is being elected through parliamentary vote. Right. So there is a executive presidency system that uh, is being followed in in Sri Lanka. Now uh, the majority party in, uh, in 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 the parliament of Sri Lanka is uh, definitely the uh, the Sri Lankan uh, People's Party or Sri Lankan People's Front, as they say, SLPP. Correct. And the leader of this majority party, which is uh, majorly uh, Rajpaksha loyalists, is Dinesh Gunavardhane. And Dinesh Gunavardhane now has been appointed as the new Sri Lankan Prime Minister uh, by uh, the present president, Ranil Vikram Singh. Right, so very important news. Dinesh Gunavardhane appointed as the new Sri Lankan Prime Minister. Now, this news has you know, erupted protests in the country. Why? Because they are still Rajpaksa loyalists. Right. Now, uh, so these are some important details, which uh, uh, is something to be kept in mind. Moving to the next news article, coming from the world of uh, films and television entertainment. Well, the 68th National Film Awards 2020 were being recently announced in a ceremony and a Tamil movie, Surarai Patru. Surarai Patru has won the best film award in the 68th National Film Awards uh, 2020. Very important news students. Surarai Patru has been won the award for best film. Now, mind you, it has a very famous uh, actor, Surya. And uh, uh, in fact, it has won the film of, won the award for best feature film, best actor, best actress, and best background score, and even best screenplay at the 68th National Film Awards. Right. So very important question uh, for all the students preparing for the law examination. Uh, although a factual uh, uh, news, but then it may be very important for the examination. Right. So National Film Awards, most prestigious. Uh, film awards in the country and 68th National Film Awards were because of the COVID, it got postponed and the award for 2020 were being awarded for, uh, you know, uh, in the yesterday, right? And Tamil movie Sorarai Patru has won the national award. Now, this movie was released in the year 2020 and you can see uh, in this slide uh, the pictorial representation of this uh, very famous and popular movie Sorarai Patru. And this is uh, the image of the uh, of the star, the actor Surya. Now, 
Tanaji from Bollywood, uh, also released in the year 2020, just before the outbreak of COVID, uh, in the month of January, it was released. Tanaji, the unsung warrior. Now, this movie has won the awards for Best Actor Ajay Devgan and Best Popular Film, film providing wholesome entertainment. Correct. And Devgan has shared the Best Actor Award with Surya, correct, who got the recognition of Surya Dupatru. So, in this sense, the best feature film or the best film award goes to Surari Putru from Tamil, Tamil Nadu. It's a Tamil movie. And the best actor award is being shared jointly by Ajay Devgan, who was a you know, major lead or major main actor for in Tanaji. And Surya was the main actor in Surai Putru. I hope it is clear. Now, there are some other South Indian movies like Aparna, Bala Muru. Now, um, Aparna Balamuru is a be- uh, has got the Best Actress, Actress Award for a role in the Tamil uh, film. Now, late Sachidanand KR has got the Best Director Award for Malayalam movie Ayyappunna Kashyun, right? So, Best Director Award and uh, also the Best Non-Feature Film Award goes to Testimony of Anna. So, there are some other details which I have to mention, but uh, here there are two important uh, things which have to be kept in mind, uh, something which has to be memorized, is the Best Film Award which is for the Tamil movie Surai Rupatru, number one. Number two, Best Actor Award, jointly shared by Ajay Devgan and Surya. Surya for Surai Rupatru and Ajay Devgan for Tanaji. Right. So these are the two important takeaways from this article. I hope it is clear. Moving to the next news article on the screen. A very important bill for the preservation and conservation of Antarctic continent in the southern pole of our planet is being passed by Lok Sabha. Now, this bill was being debated and deliberated for past few years, and uh, and now it is being uh, you know passed in Lok Sabha, the lower house, in the form of Indian uh, Antarctic Bill 2022. Right now, the major thing in this bill is that it will extend the jurisdiction of Indian courts to Antarctica continent. Well, definitely Antarctica is an overseas territory. It doesn't come, uh, you know, under, uh, uh, you know, under the territorial jurisdiction of Indian courts. But there are many expeditions, you know, uh, uh, of Indian, you know, Indian citizens going for, let's say, uh, for for tourism, for expedition. Uh, so they all would now come under the penal provisions for crime, right? Uh, after the passage of this bill, number one. Number two, even the foreign citizens who will be the part of such Indian expeditions, if they also, you know, uh, do some offense at Antarctica, they would also be held guilty under uh, the uh, Indian courts or they would be adjudicated under Indian courts. Plus, uh, you know, all the uh, some, some offense which is which takes place in the precincts of Indian research stations. So we have some research stations. In, uh, in Antarctica, which we learn in the coming slides, like Maitri. And if something happens uh, in and around those uh, research stations, then uh, such disputes or such cases would also be adjudicated by Indian courts. Right. So in this way, it is a very important development uh, by the Indian legislature. Why? Because India students, mind you, is a signatory to the Antarctica Treaty of 1963. Now, Antarctica Treaty, was signed in the year 1963 to preserve and conserve the uh, the, the environment of Antarctica, right? The the snow cladded uh, southern pole, the frozen southern pole, right? And India was a signatory to that treaty. Getting my point? So, so in this way, India has fulfilled its obligations of being a signatory to the treaty, and it's a welcome move, uh, you know, by the uh, government, you know, after uh, now now. So the regular visits and the activities to Antarctica as well, uh, you know, would set ground rules for potential disputes that may arise among those present and the, on the continent, right? So this is what we discussed. So now students, you keep this thing in mind that all the private tours and expedition, expeditions to Antarctica, you know, would be prohibited without a permit or written authorization by a member country. Getting my point. So for example, uh, let's say India is a signatory or a member country to Antarctica Treaty. Now, if any private tour operator or uh, you know any tourist is uh, going for expedition to Antarctica, then it has to take permission or legal permission or written authorization from India 
or from the member country right so in this sense it is a very important development at the same time india is the signatory is a member country for the antarctica uh, to the antarctica treaty of 1963 and it is one of the 54 signat signatories of the treaty so if they ask you that how many signatories are there in the antarctica treaty so the answer would be 54 right so in this way uh, uh, all the research facilities uh, uh, which is which are there uh, you know uh, uh, at, at antarctica you know of the indian government now would all come under the uh, jurisdiction of indian courts number one number two at the same time the government would also create a fund you know for the protection of antarctica environment and uh, the wild species and that is called as antarctica fund right so separate fund in the budget would be you know uh, separate uh, located to for the preservation and protection of antarctica environment and that would be called as antarctica fund very very important uh, and they may ask you questions on this when was antarctica treaty signed 1963 how many members are there 54 is india a member yes so this is about antarctica bill and some of the uh, key takeaways uh, which i have just mentioned here right so it would also protect the mineral resources and the bill further prohibits any kind of drilling dredging or excavation or collection of mineral resources or even doing anything to identify where such mineral deposits occur. It would also protect the biodiversity. Very important students. So you must understand that uh, the bill, Antarctica bill, would protect the mineral resources. At the same time, it would also protect the native plants. Getting my point. So uh, it would, there would be a strict prohibition on damaging the native plants. That means flora uh, and fauna. And uh, it, they, they would also prohibit any uh, flying or landing of helicopters or vessels, you know, that would disturb the wild species there. At the same time, uh, there would also be prohibition on introducing birds not native to Antarctica. Now, this is something which is very, very important, guys, because there are cases, you know, uh, in the past where countries have introduced birds uh, and other species in Antarctica, and this actually you know disturbs their uh, you know their uh, their uh, their chain and the uh, you know the and the uh, the dispersion of the the network of the species. So you cannot now onwards you cannot introduce any new animal, bird, plant, or even microscopic organism that are not native to Antarctica. Uh, so that is prohibited under this bill. And violators found you know introducing such uh, alien species into the into uh, into Antarctica would face imprisonment as well as penalties. Very important takeaway, which is actually not mentioned in this uh, newspaper article, but this is something being uh, you know uh, taken from genuine sources. Now, what is the need of such law? Well, definitely uh, we have to have full provisions under the Antarctica Treaty. Treaty why? Because India is the signatory member of Antarctica Treaty of 1963, and. Uh, uh, you know, and Antarctica Treaty came into being in 1963. However, India joined as a signatory in 1983. Correct. Now, key highlights. Well, as I said, that India maintains at present two research stations in Antarctica. The first is Maitre, which was commissioned in the year 1989. Right, very old, 1989, almost uh, 30 years old. Maitre, and the second is Bharti. Now, Bharti was commissioned just uh, 10 years back in uh, 2012, right? So, Bharti and Maitri are two very important research stations, uh, you know, commissioned by India to research the environment of Antarctica. Moving ahead, uh, at the same time, it has, it has uh, you know, launched uh, uh, 41 scientific expeditions every year thus far. And together with Himadri station in Svalbard, above the Arctic Circle. So in this sense, not only in Antarctica, Indian government also have its research stations at, Hima, it, at Arctic Circle, which is the northern pole of, uh, of our planet or of our Earth. Right, so the northern frozen uh, part is called the Arctic, so Arctic Circle or Arctic, and the southern part is called Antarctica. Right, so the North Pole and the South Pole, right. So on the Arctic Circle, you, Indian government has a research station called as Himadri. Right? So please don't get confused between Himadri, Maitri, and Bharti. Bharti, Maitri are at Antarctica, and Himadri, 
is at Arctic, very important. Now, some of the uh, important factual details about Antarctica, like Antarctica is the fifth largest continent, uh, you know, out of the, uh, the seven continents. And uh, India officially acceded to the Antarctica Treaty System. Well, as I said, that Antarctica Treaty System came in the year 1963, and India joined just 20 years later, right? That in the year 1983, correct? So India joined the Antarctica Treaty and became a signatory member in the year 1983. However, this treaty came, in the fo came into force in 1963, correct? So this is also something to be kept in mind. Now, uh, the, all the Indian Antarctica programs are being controlled by National Center for Antarctic and Ocean Research, and uh, which is uh, uh, which comes under or which is operated by Ministry of Earth Sciences. Right. So therefore, uh, you know, the Jitain Jitain Singh is also the member. Sorry, is the Minister of Ministry of Earth Sciences. So this is how the Southern Pole, Antarctica, looks like. As you can see, uh, some islands, King George Island, uh, so on and so forth, Mount Vinson. Magnetic South Pole, and this is the uh, the topography of Antarctica, the fifth largest continent. Well, uh, Antarctica Treaty, students, uh, was signed between twelve countries, you know, on first December nineteen fifty nine, and however, it entered into force in nineteen sixty one, and has been exceeded by many other nations. It, currently, it has fifty four countries. And the headquarter of, uh, of Antarctica Treaty System is Argentina, a South American country, and it has a city called as Buenos Aires. Now, the uh, the the uh, the reason why the treaty was signed in order to make Antarctica continent a demilitarized zone. Getting my point? In order to make Antarctica a demilitarized zone. Uh, so that it can be preserved for scientific research. So this is all about uh, the important events, right? 59 is the Antarctica Treaty, 72, conservation of Antarctic seals, and so forth. There's also been a growing, uh, you know, uh, Chinese interest in the Antarctic resources, especially the fisheries and the minerals. And China may seek to exploit the weakness in the treaty system to secure access to these resources. Well, moving to the next news article, students on the screen. In Rajya Sabha, the upper house of Indian parliament, some private member bills were introduced or were being tabled. So a private member bill is that bill which is not being passed sorry which is not being tabled or introduced by the minister right any member of the parliament which is not a minister is called as private member and the private member may be from the ruling party or he or she may be from the opposition mind you because because the ministers are just limited to 15 percent of the total strength of Lok Sabha I'm getting my point 15% of the total strength of Lok Sabha and the total strength of Lok Sabha is 543. So 15% of 543 comes to around 82 MPs, right? So and these 82 MPs are the ministers, right? And this is called as the executive or the government, right? So all other remaining members, you know, because in order to form the government, you have to have 272, right? Out of 543. So all the remaining members who are not uh, among the list of 82 members, be it them from the ruling party, would be called as private members and any bill introduced by such private members is called as private member bill correct so this is the first aspect which we must uh, you know understand now there's some details about the private member bill i want to uh, maybe you explain what is private member bill now very important it has to be introduced in the once it i mean before it is being introduced in the round, one month notice has to be given right so uh, prior to its introduction, it requires one month's notification. Now, let us see what all bills are being, uh, you know, uh, introduced. A very, very important students, a bill on uniform civil code. 
Now we know that Article 44 talks about a uh, uniform civil code, uh, which comes under directive principles of state policy. And uh, although they are, it is non-justiciable, uh, then all it, it 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 puts you know a, a moral obligation on the state, you know, uh, uh, to fulfill uh, this objective, uniform civil code. That means we should have one law, you know, to govern all the uh, religious communities. See. We all know that once a crime or an offense is being committed, every person, irrespective of his or her religious affiliation, would be subject to one or uniform or common law called as Indian Penal Code on NCRPC. Right. So the point is, when we have one criminal uh, uniform criminal code or criminal law, why not we should? Why not we have? Uh, why don't we have a uniform civil law? Getting my point. So when we have a uniform criminal law, uh, you know, to educate all the offenses irrespective of the religious affiliations, we why we should also have a uniform civil code, right? When I say civil code, all the cases which are related to uh, marriage, inheritance of property, adoption, divorce, maintenance, succession of property, right? All these areas must have uh, because they all are civil law, right? So, because today what we have are different religious personal laws. For example, Hindu Marriage Act, then Muslim person, personal law, Sharia, then Parsis have their own uh, uh, religious personal law, uh, similar districts have their own religious personal laws, right? So, once you go into the court, you know, uh, for let's say any dispute, be it a property dispute or a, uh, you know, a case related to divorce, if uh, there is a Hindu couple, it, uh, they would be adjudicated under Hindu personal law. If it's a Muslim couple, they would be held under Muslim per, uh, personal law, so on and so forth. Right. So the point is, when we have one criminal code, why not we have a uniform civil code? And this is not I am saying it is mentioned in the Constitution, Article 44, that to principle. And students, it was also one of the objective which was being, you know, uh, which was being supported by Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Ambedkar always wanted uniform civil code in India. He was never in favor of country being divided on religious lines as far as the civil law is concerned, because he was afraid that such division of, uh, of such religious laws, you know, may result into communal riots and this uh, harmony in the society, and would result into the balkanization of the country. And therefore, the government is, you know, taking this view from Baba Sahib Ambedkar and Article 44, which is definitely a moral duty of the state, is in the process to actually, you know, uh, make it a law, uniform civil code, right? Very important. At the same time, uh, a private member bill has also come up to repeal the places of worship act. Now, students, we all would be knowing the Gyan Wafi uh, Masjid case, right? Uh, well, in the previous uh, previous DNA sessions, we also explored this issue and even check uh, over there. We understood that Gyan Wapi uh, is, was uh, definitely uh, uh, when Aurangzeb was there, the emperor, he destructed the temple in order to construct a, a, a music, uh, right, a mosque, right. And uh, post that it is being worshipped by the uh, Muslim uh, community. And in 1991, a law was being uh, passed in the parliament uh, called as Places of Worship Act. Now, this law says that all the, uh, you know, worship places, you know, uh, the status quo would be maintained on in these worship places. That means it would be frozen uh, in uh, the status, uh, the nature of the worship, you know, which is being carried out in these worship, uh, worship places or places of worship would be frozen, you know. Uh, as on August 15, 1947, right? That means at the time of independence of the country, right? Whichever religious community was practicing uh, uh, the uh, the worship in any religious place, the same status quo would be maintained. Getting my point? But an exception was made to uh, uh, the uh, Places of Worship Act in the form of Babri Masjid Ram Janmabhumi dispute, right? And we know that now it has been resolved, correct? So my point is that uh, although the VHP, the Vishwindu Parishad is saying that uh, even at the time of independence, the Hindu communities were also 
you know worshiping at uh, at one of the places in uh, in the in the in the peripheries of uh, gyanwapi right so a new private member bill is also being uh, you know introduced uh to amend or to repeal in fact uh, the places of worship act of 1991 which has made uh, you know uh, uh, so much of news uh, and voice in the recent uh, past few months i hope it is clear so we are clear with the uniform civil code and the places of worship act now there are some other uh, bills which are to be introduced in fact the uniform civil code uh, a bjp uh, uh, mp is saying that we would be you know going coming up with uh, coming up with national inspection and investigation committee and i i see for preparation of uniform civil code and its implementation throughout india right so before you implement uniform civil code you i mean the government is actually exploring uh, to form an agency which would uh, check the implementation of uniform civil code throughout the country right and uh, it would be called as nic or national inspection and investigation committee at the same time uh, uh, a private member bill was also being introduced uh, by a cpi member a right, communist party of india and it is by the name of national commission for the welfare of home based workers bill getting my point so national commission for home based workers uh, uh, sorry the national commission for the welfare of home based workers bill now home based workers students are those workers which do not come in the organized uh, sector and they may be self employed for example home based worker let's say uh, there are some people who are doing viewing uh, viewing or let's say you know uh, 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 designing some handicrafts preparing some handicrafts or viewing or let's say uh, designing uh, some some sports articles from their home or uh, possibly uh, you know uh, 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 in the in the proximity to their uh, to their uh, home right so so that is those those are those category of home based work, workers are called as self employed home based workers and there may be some home based workers you know who are working in some other uh, 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 you know on some some other domestic uh, uh, occupations right but then they are not uh, under payroll that means they do not come under uh, the organized uh, sector right so uh, sadly uh, their contribution goes unnoticed and uh, they are not legally recognized are you getting a point so they are not legally recognized and there is a reason why they are being exploited there are no labor laws to check uh, you know uh, uh, their work conditions so they remain an exploited and invisible class of workers living under the mercy of global brands for whom they do the hard work right so this is the third bill which is being uh, introduced now the fourth bill which was introduced very important Uh, right to health bill now uh, member of parliament from rashtriya janata dal rjd manoj kumar uh, has introduced a very important bill now this bill would make health or access to health or in fact you know uh, access to affordable uh, health as a fundamental right under article 21 now this bill would uh, would would mean that a person who is being devoid of the health facilities or who is being devoid of uh, you know accessible and affordable health uh, it would be a clear violation of his right to life and liberty right so a person who do not have the right to health uh, there is no point of uh, having you know uh, i mean it would actually infringe his right to life so therefore they are uh, they are in the process to make it a fundamental right uh, to all the citizens and to ensure equitable access and maintenance of standard of physical and mental health right now in this sense uh, the government is thinking to allow more allocation for the health sector uh, i mean as far as this bill is concerned and uh, so that the out of pocket expenditure on the health uh, is, is 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 you know uh, is reduced so some important bills which are being introduced in rajya sabha moving ahead now as far as the government bills are concerned government bill is any bill which is being introduced by the minister right and uh, uh, you know um, the government bills can be introduced and discussed on any day whereas private bill can be introduced and discussed only on fridays right so there are two important things which we learned about private member bills number one it is a bill which is introduced by a non minister number two 
uh, one month notice period has to be given. Number three, it can be introduced only on Fridays, right? And it's been mentioned in the rule of the house. So very important uh, uh, takeaways from this article. Uh, and uh, 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 the rejection of a private member bill has no implication on the parliamentary confidence in the government or its resignation, right? Now, there are some important facts about the private member bill. The first is the last time a private member bill, see, to date in date, there are 14 private member bills which have been uh, introduced, right? And of 14, five of were, uh, were introduced in Rajya Sabha, uh, getting my point. And uh, the last time a private member bill was passed by both houses was in way back in 1970. Right? So 52 years back, uh, 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 that was the last time a private member bill was passed, in fact, by both the houses. And, and, and it was, and this bill, you know, they may ask you that, what was the name of that bill? Uh, the last time a private member bill was passed, so it was Supreme Court Enlargement of Criminal Appellate Jurisdiction Bill 1968. Now, there are some other private member bills. So in all, 14 private members have, bills have been passed till date uh, since the independence. And some other private member bills, member bills that have become laws include one. Number one, proceedings of legislative protection of publication bill 956 in Lok Sabha, then salaries and allowances of MP amendment bill 964 and IPC amendment bill 1967 as these in Rajya Sabha. Right. So these are some important takeaways. Moving ahead. All right, so it is about the Places of Worship Act 1991, which we uh, just discussed. Right. Moving to the next news article on the screen. Well, students, we all are aware that uh, the rupee, Indian rupee, is facing uh, uh, depreciation and it has gone to a record low of 80 rupees to a dollar. Right. And it is a sign of worry because, uh, because it, is in, it, it is increasing the import bill. Right. See, when we are exporting some commodity, we, we, we you know, we earn a uh, rupee, right? So let's say yesterday, uh, one rupee to dollar was, uh, you know, one dollar was uh, 72 rupees, assume. Today, one dollar is 80 rupees, right? So if yesterday a person exporting any commodity was getting 72 rupees, today he will get 80 rupees, right? So today he'll get eight rupees more as compared to yesterday, right? So in this sense, a depre depreciation as a process always boosts your exports. You know, it boosts your exports because now uh, you would the exporters would get more money. You know, uh, for for their exports. Number one. Number two. If I talk about the, its impact on uh, on on imports, right? Because see, when you're importing something, you pay in dollars, right? And that is how international trades work. So we are importing, let's say, uh, crude oil you pay in dollars and how you pay it, from where you pay it. Now the dollars are being kept in a reserve called as foreign exchange reserve with RBI, right? So, so whenever you are importing something, you are actually you know, taking or withdrawing from the foreign exchange reserve, getting my point. So if, 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 the, if there is depreciation, let's say, for if a person who is importing a commodity yesterday, was shelling out 72 rupees from the foreign exchange reserve, not 72, uh, you know, today he has to shell equivalent to 80 rupees, right? So this, in this sense, the imports would become costlier. That means the import bill would become high and this would, in, uh, in fact, you know, uh, 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 reduce the imports and increase the uh, 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 exports, right? So, Therefore, uh, although the economies across the world are facing uh, depreciation, and uh, this is how what Shakti Khan Das, the uh, RBI governor, is uh, rightly saying, that rupee has, would find its level and uh, uh, in line with its fundamental and fundamentals, and it did not target any specific value. And RBI, as the Central Bank of India, would iron out any volatile or bumpy movements in current, currencies exchange rate. 
Now, RBI stands on the rupee's recent depreciation against US dollar because it it went to a low of 80 uh, a dollar. You know, 80 rupees a dollar in 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 the past week. That means it was a, a change of seven percent almost. Uh, RBI Shakti Kanda asserted that rupee was holding up well relative to both advanced and emerging market peers due to India's strong underlying fundamentals and the resilient uh, are resilient and intact. At the same time, RBI has, you know, uh, has come up with various actions, including measures to encourage inflows. But still, because after the, uh, the COVID-19, uh, the pandemic and the Russian invasion of Ukraine, there are elevated commodity prices, especially the crude oil, and this would definitely put pressure on our import bill. And uh, at the same time, he said that the portfolio funds, that means the foreign portfolio investors or foreign institutional investors, you know, the for, uh, you know, the foreigners in, uh, investing in India's stock market, market, are selling off assets and fleeing to the safe havens, right? Because of the competitive, uh, you know, uh, the the tight monetary policies practiced. Uh, you know, by various central banks uh, across the world. And if I take an example of America, you know, the American Federal Bank has also, you know, uh, has undergone a tight monetary uh, policy with increased rates. So, 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 so they have become safe havens, you know, and 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 with their attractive uh, rates, you know, uh, in fact, in fact, RBI also increased its, its, its repo rate uh, to control inflation, right? What because you know that what inflation is nothing but the uh, but the increase uh, increase in the money supply, right? When too much money is chasing too few goods, that means there is huge money. There is a good amount of money supply in the market, but uh, but it is not being matched by 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 the supply, right? So there is supply constraint. I getting my point. So in this way, uh, 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 there is a general increase in the level of prices, right? So whenever there is huge money supply, what would the RBI do? It would absorb the excess liquidity from the market, and there are many measures or money many monetary pools. The tools by which it can do so. One such is uh, the repo rate, right? So it would do increase the repo rate. Students, do you know what is repo rate? Repo rate is nothing but the rate charged by RBI. Uh, you know, uh, uh, in uh, when it borrows money from the uh, 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 from the uh, commercial bank, right? Uh, getting a point. So uh, so whenever uh, let's say the rate is uh, is 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 rising. So in this sense, the commercial banks would be uh, enticed, you know, to park more money with the RBI, right? And in this sense, the excess uh, liquidity in the market would be sucked or would be absorbed uh, by the RBI the moment it increases the repo rate, right? So I repeat, repo rate is a rate charged by the RBI, uh, uh, you know, when it uh, borrows money from the uh, from from the bank from the commercial banks, right? So in this sense, the RBI is saying that uh, you know the uh, uh, there are many safe havens outside, and it was leading to 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 capital uh, outflow, right? And uh, the currency depreciations and the reserve drawdowns uh, complicating the macroeconomic management. At the same time, uh, Shakti Das is quite confident the CAD, uh, which is a part of your balance of payments, right, uh, is, is is modest. Uh, you know, and inflation is stabilizing, uh, although it is crossing the tolerance limit set by the Monetary Policy Committee of four plus minus two percent. It is crossing uh, six percent. I'm talking about the retail inflation, right? We all know that retail inflation is hitting somewhere around six point two, six point one percent, which is above the tolerance limit set by the Monetary Policy Committee. Uh, in fact, uh, but then it is said, said that uh, after the uh, after the increase in the repo rate. And they believe that the inflation would stabilize sooner than later. At the same time, he also said that the financial sector is well capitalized and sound, and external debt to GDP ratio is declining. Right, so very important, you know, debt to GDP ratio. What percentage of debt is what percentage of GDP is your debt, right? And specifically the external debt, and so that is declining. So that is a very, very, very good indicator. At the same time, the foreign exchange reserves are adequate. Although they have been dipped because of the depreciation, it is somewhere around six hundred billion dollars, and uh, uh, there, there there was a shortfall of supply of the foreign exchange in the market uh, relative to demand because of import, you know, and 
debt servicing requirements and the portfolio outflow outflow that i just uh, discussed right so the rbi had been uh, supplying the dollars to ensure that there was adequate forex liquidity right so the rbi is also supplying dollars to maintain a healthy foreign exchange reserve so this is an important article uh, for all the students preparing for civil services clerk examination uh, and any government examination it may be so these are some details which i have just mentioned uh, screen So depreciation, as we discussed, is a fall in the value of currency in a floating exchange rate system, which we have uh, post the LPG reforms or liberalization, privatization, globalization reforms. Uh, what is the impact of depreciation? Well, it boosts India's exports, as we just discussed. Negative is definitely it is a risk of the imported inflation. There is a risk of imported inflation because of the high import bill, uh, so on and so forth. So yeah, the U.S. Federal Reserve, the central bank of the United States, has been raising its benchmark interest rate, causing the investors seeking higher returns to, uh, you know, to 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 pull capital away from emerging markets such as India and back into the United States, right? So because the United States, uh, their the interest rates are higher, they're attractive, so they are uh, they are more uh, you know keen on investing uh, in the United States uh, instead of India. So so there is a huge capital outflow, which is also uh, a cause of worry. Now, appreciation versus depreciation. Ah, uh, this is something which uh, you would be knowing that depreciation is uh, like uh, you know the rupee becoming uh, becoming 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 costlier. You know, uh, is there is a dollar, you know, and uh, and appreciation is is the opposite of that. In fact, uh, for example, let's say present if today the one dollar to rupee is seventy two and uh, uh, yesterday it was uh, 75, so the, that means the rupee has appreci appreciated that. Well, moving to the editorial section on the screen. Well, uh, recently, guys, we all know that uh, Vladimir Putin, the president of the Russian Federation, has uh, you know uh, went for the visit to Iran, the capital Tehran, to expand the Russian influence in the region. While we students, uh, well, we know that Iran is also. Uh, belligerent to America, especially after the uh, withdrawal of America from the joint comprehensive, uh, you know, uh, uh, joint, uh, you know, uh, comprehensive plan of action, a deal, a nuclear deal, you know, signed between U.S. and European countries and Iran. And in 2018, Donald Trump, uh, you know, withdrew, you know, uh, came out from uh, JCPOA, uh, and now uh, Iran, so many sanctions were being imposed, and uh, so therefore Russia finds solace. In uh, in Iran, you know, because 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 it's the fact that Russia is has purchased the drones and some military uh, equipments from Iran uh, in its war in Ukraine, right? So uh, in 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 a country like Russia, which is which is facing you know, sanctions, you know, uh, Russia is finding Iran as its close ally and is building the relationship with uh, this Middle East country. Why? Because recently. Uh, Joe Biden, American president, also visited Middle East, and it 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 you know strengthened its relation with uh, with uh, uh, you know with Saudi and uh, Israel, right? So in this sense, it is a counterbalance uh, a geostrategic politics being played in uh, in Middle East. Well, hours before uh, Putin landed in Tehran, the country signed a 40 billion dollar energy MOU where Russia's Gazprom would work with the national Iranian oil company in developing energy fields and building LNG projects and pipelines. Right? So, guys, we know that Russia is the largest reservoir, has the largest natural gas reservoirs, and it would be supplying the energy resources to uh, to, to to Iran. Right now, last week, America had also claimed that Russia was all seeking armed drones, you know, uh, from Iran to deploy in Ukraine. Now in uh, now Tehran, it was uh, a trilateral summit. Why? Because the Turkish Turkish president uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan was also the part of this summit. So Russian uh, leader Putin, Turkish president uh, Erdogan, and uh, Iranian uh, you know uh, uh, premiers Ayatollahs were present, right? And a trilateral summit 
uh, got arrived was arrived came into being right although uh, turkey is mind you is a nato member unlike uh, russia and iran but then uh, it, it 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 is on the same page with russia as far as the uh, syrian civil war is concerned and 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 with russia it is actually you know uh, 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 curbing the uh, or suppressing the uh, the protesters or the rebels in 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 syria right at the same time uh, a, a un proposal to allow the grain exports from ukraine ports via black sea was also being signed in this uh, in the summit right so this is what we uh, uh, you know kind of understood uh, in this uh, article so an important one again a uh, article uh, on the previous section about the currency caution you know rupee might still be overvalued as uh, you know being found out explored by the editor that uh, although I agree that it is uh, it has depreciated you know almost 7% against the us dollar uh, you know weakening the past historic low right so it is uh, of 80 to a dollar you know earlier this week but then compared to the other economies which are almost all are facing depreciation uh, uh, we are also we are far at a better stage and uh, so it is uh, the editor is saying that the rupee might still be overvalued and it may further depreciate so the domestic manufacturers and the service providers are now having to cope with not just higher dollar prices for the raw materials equipment or other supplies they may need to procure from overseas For many reasons war in ukraine mounting import bills uh, so these are some important takeaways and uh, Foreign portfolio investors, the FIIs, who are selling off their assets and fleeing to safe havens, as we did discuss in the previous article. And uh, the rupee's real effective exchange rate, something called this REAR. Now, guys, REAR is an uh, inflation adjusted figure, you know, uh, exchange rate. And it is, it, 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 it is different from a uh, nominal exchange, effective exchange rate, which is non inflation adjusted. So, this is how uh, NEAR and REAR are, uh, you know, are being distinguished. NEAR is a nominal effective exchange rate and it tells about a country's international competitiveness in terms of the foreign exchange market right but trade weighted currency index whereas whereas real is uh, is captured in inflation differentials between the home economy and trading partners so these are the exchange rates some important differences see real or the, the real exchange, uh, exchange rate right real effective exchange rate is is inflation adjusted whereas near is uh, you know the value of domestic currency as compared to the foreign currencies getting my point for example one dollar is equal to 80 rupees today that is it nullifies the impact of inflation differential it then it is impacted by inflation differential as it is quite clear and uh, but so guys that's all for today i hope you enjoyed uh, the session uh, now stay tuned for all the live updates from the Clat Prep headquarters. Press the bell icon for all the live breaking news on daily uh, basis. And feel free to post any comment, any question in the comment box, and we'll be very happy, more than happy to answer all your questions and queries. Wish you all the best. Good day. Goodbye. God bless you.